Hi and welcome to another video from Clodden Painting Studio. This is Rudy. Um, I am doing a little showcase video today of a recently completed commission uh, for some Napoleonic French um, infantry. Um, all these miniatures are from Front Rank, um, who are now sold by Gripping Beast. Um, these are all in different variations of the uh, Bardin regulations. So that's 1812 to 1815 uniforms. And the front rank range offers an incredible number of individual poses, um, a lot of which can be purchased individually rather than as a pack. So for dioramas or skirmish games, you can basically tailor um, the force to your taste. Um, pictured here we have um, infantry officers in the front, we have some um, drummers and a fifer along with some eagle bearers without their uh, flagstaffs. Um, client is going to fit them later along with some nice flags I assume. Um, and then we have a, a different um, number of attacking uh, poses. Quite a lot of um, centre company fusiliers either attacking with muskets um, or bayonets. And we have some more typical advancing and marching poses um, towards the rear both of flank companies, uh, grenadiers, uh, voltageurs, and centre company fusiliers in, this, in the middle. Now for a closer look at some of the different sculpts that are available. Looking at um, grenadier company here. You can tell it's the grenadiers with the extra red epaulettes, um, red bands and chevrons on the shackles. And our uh, more interesting plumes remind me of uh, thistles. Now the fella over here has a great big round um, tufted pom pom there, and you might also notice that he is in uh, gaiters without overalls over the top. So we might call this a dress uniform, which you might more expect to see on uh, the parade ground than on the battlefield. Um, but this great big uh, pom-pom does look rather nice so it's great that front rank offer the the option there um, we've got some campaign dress as it might be called in the middle um, so he's got some overalls um, over the top of the gaiters you can just about see the bottom of the gaiters poking out over his boots if I get that tuft out of the way um, and lastly we've got the great coated option uh, you might notice that the shackle has a cover on it. That would be waterproof, um, possibly sort of an oil skin. It helps to protect the shackle while on the march. On the opposite flank to the Grenadiers, we'd have the Voltageur Company. Um, and again, um, we see a dress uniform, campaign, and in a great coat with that large tuft, tufted plume there. Now one interesting thing that the front rank um, miniatures offer is voltagers without um, epaulettes and without the uh, short sword, the saber, uh, saber briquet, if we're trying to pronounce French badly. Um, the 1812 regulations asked that voltagers dropped both the short sword and the epaulettes from the uniform. Um, but quite often, um, colonels of regiments ignored that order. So a lot of the time you see um, voltageur uh, models with both uh, sculpted on. But front rank offer the option uh, to have them uh, without the epaulets or the short sword. So a nice choice there. Uh, these are uh, centre company fusiliers in various poses. We've got marching figures in campaign dress and also uh, the great coat option. 
Um, and then we have some more skirmishy uh, attacking uh, characters. Um, swinging a musket to club someone over the head. Um, thrusting uh, with the bayonet. And finishing someone off on the ground. This chap here is wearing the Pokalem, um, which was uh, a forage cap. Replaced the sort of earlier um, bonnet de police. You might even see some of the um, fusiliers who were uh, called up in the sort of the, the man manpower crisis of 1813, 1814, um, wearing uh, these um, and a, a great coat. Uh, they weren't even provided with uh, shackles and um, habit vests. Uh, which is the um, jacket that we see in the centre here. Having a closer look at officer uniforms now. Um, officers might be wearing a, a blue uh, greatcoat over the top of their um, habit vest there. The rear of the vest um, had longer tails um, than a fusilier. And in some cases, um, as the officers paid for these to be tailored to their own taste, um, they might have added some piping onto the turnbacks there. On this side, we have the surtout, which is a single-breasted coat. Um, and this was often worn on campaign to protect the more delicate um, habit from damage while uh, marching. And turnbacks on this um, were often um, that blue colour, but again, personal taste let some officers um, have different coloured turnbacks. Headwear, we've got options of uh, bicorns um, or shackles. And again, a bit of personal taste uh, came into deciding what officers wore. They might wear breeches uh, tucked into uh, boots, or they might wear um, some overalls. And drummer uniforms. Um, this drummer is from the, the Grenadier Company. Um, he has the red bands on his shackle uh, with the chevrons and the um, red thistle-like uh, plume there. Um, and a centre company drummer here. The drummer's coats um, after the 1812 regulations um, were sort of more uniform than they had been in the uh, prior period. Um, a green coat uh, with a yellow um, decorated lace um, was sort of commonplace throughout all the line infantry uh, regiments. Before 1812, um, there'd been a lot of uh, flexibility and officers could dress up their drummers just about how they pleased. Um, and you see all sorts of different colours um, of jackets in that period. Um, a lot more uniform from 1812 on um, and a bit of fine control with the brush needed to get the um, sort of dotted effect um, but simply painting um, the raised uh, areas yellow over the, the green background would suffice there. I've brought in one of my own figures. This is a peri-plastic uh, fusilier um, in the earlier uh, period uh, dress. So what you might expect from about 1807 um, all the way up to 1814 there were still um, some regiments wearing this uniform. Um, the 1812 regulation didn't get adopted by everyone in 1812. Um, there's a couple of differences. Uh, if we start with the shackle um, we have a lozenge, a sort of uh, diamond shaped plate instead of uh, the Imperial Eagle. The shape of the lapels is different. At the 1812 uniform we can see and um, we've got a sort of straight line of piping along the bottom and um, kind of a, a sort of a flared opening to the jacket there. And at the rear, I've um, got much longer coattails on the 
earlier uniform um, and they're piped in red as well they're much shorter coattails uh, with no piping after 1812 um, from what I've read I think this was to sort of make the um, fabrication of the uniform a bit easier um, and having shorter coattails um, could often mean it was easier uh, to move on the march um, less fabric to, to tear and maintain so hopefully that's a useful um, sort of look at the differences um, in uniforms between the sort of earlier and later Napoleonic era um, and also a good look at the range of poses um, and dress options that front rank offer. I hope you've enjoyed um, this little showcase that I've put together. The front rank range um, is excellent, nice value um, and allows the, the tailoring um, to suit your tastes so go check them out at Gripping Beast. Uh, thanks to my client for sending me these nice models to paint and for agreeing for me to upload this video. If you've got any comments, please leave them below and I'll speak to you next time. Thanks. Bye bye.